Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. Silver smuggling in 1740 and gold piracy in 2018. These are the subjects for a topic on a Sunday. Interesting indeed. The first comes to us from Coin World. In a 1740 shipwreck, reveals evidence of smuggling. Some coins that were found in a Dutch vessel, Ruswich, suggest, suggest that the ship crew was trading illegally. Look at that. Look at those coins. Here's a collection of the different coins that were found on the wreck. Uh, Ruswich, Ruswick, a Dutch ship that sank off the coast of England. The Goodwin Sands, also known as the Great Ship Swallower, is a 10-mile sandbank at the southern end of the North Sea, lying six miles off the coast of Deal, or Deal, in the English county of Kent. As the sandbank is close to the Straits of Dover with its major shipping lanes, many ships have been wrecked upon the Goodwin Sands. One of the most notable was the Rooswick. I'm, per I'm presuming the J is silent, I guess. Uh, a Dutch East India company uh, vessel which came to came to grief in January 1740. Well, I guess it would be uh, a time to grieve if the ship wrecks, for sure. The disaster claimed all 237 passengers and crew, its cargo consisting of a large quantity of silver in the form of ingots and coinage, and blocks of stone and iron bars. The cargo is believed to have been worth 300,000 golden. While this sum is difficult to quantify in our money, rest assured it was and is sizable. The ship was outward bound for Batavia, today Jakarta, where its cargo would be exchanged for Asian goods, including, including spices and porcelain. Now a protected wreck site, the remains of the ship and its cargo, its crew and their personal possessions, as well as the everyday items they used, lies at a depth of some 85 feet. Interesting. That's not really that far down. Uh, the site was originally found in December 2005 by a sports diver, and the wreck was partially excavated by the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands and Historic England, working with an archaeological dive team. The finds were handed over to the Netherlands finance minister, representing the Dutch government as her heirs to the VOC. Since 2016, Dutch and British uh, archaeologists have worked together with the maritime archaeological company MSDS Marine to carry out an investigation of the site. Although there, are, there were 250 VOC shipwrecks, only a third have been located, and this is the first one to have been scientifically researched and excavated on the site. So more about the coins. Uh, the silver cargo is in the form of ingots, cob money, pieces of eight, and common term for Latin American eight real coins, which are known as pillar or Spanish dollars. These were minted to an organized standard weight of one ounce, making them perfect for international trade. The presence of these coins was to be expected, but the archaeologists found lots of other older coins at the wreck site, including Ducatons from the uh, Dutch Republic, a confederacy formed in 1581 by several Dutch provinces, and the southern Netherlands, now Belgium, that were not part of the sanctioned cargo. This indicates that those on the Ruswick were smuggled extra silver, were smuggling extra silver to trade illegally in Asia. Interesting. Other coins found during the dives have small holes in them. To the archaeologists, this indicates that the crew sewed them into their clothes to smuggle them to the Dutch, Dutch East Indies, thus concealing them from few sailors as well as the authorities. Well, shoot, I can think of a better place where you wouldn't have to drill a hole in the uh, silver coins. You know, you take a, they should take a hint on what, what the, uh, some Indians do at the airports and smuggle them up their butt. Indeed. At this time, people were also concealing silver in their shoes and belts. The smuggling of silver was prohibited by the VOC, although you didn't hear much about smuggling up the rectums back then. However, it is believed that as the mid-18th century approached, up to half the money being transported on such voyages was being smuggled. The identification of the crew, um, and most of those records have been lost, 
Until recent research, only the name of the ship's skipper, Daniel Ronzieres, was known. Genealogists in the Netherlands have been able to positively identify and name 19 members of the crew from documents held in Amsterdam City Archives. Those identified range from a senior surgeon who had made return voyages to Asia on several occasions, um, Garrett Hendrik Huffelman, a 19-year-old on his first VOC voyage, Thomas Hugh Koper, and a sailor who had previously survived the shipwreck on the Westerwick on the Cape of Good Hope. Pieter Kalmer. Most of the, of the men on board the Ruswick were born in the Netherlands, but some had German, Swedish, or Norwegian backgrounds. The, identified, the, the identifications of possible, uh, were made possible from document types. The first were transport letters, which were used by the VOC crew to allow third parties, mainly wives, to draw part of their salary during the voyage. And so quite an interesting indeed and we see here the comments from the Dutch and British teams talking more about it and the finds from the dives. Pretty in-depth article here. The fact that the shipwrecks were also graves is brought home by the discovery of the two tibia, leg bones, from two individuals. There is potential for discovery of more human remains. During this year's dives, which will continue in mid-August, more personal items have been discovered along some barrels of the galley behind the main mast. A knee, a huge piece of angled wood used to support the deck, has been uncovered and will be investigated and recorded to illustrate the enormous size of the ship. So very interesting indeed. Lots of history here. Um, once the finds have been uh, taken up, more finds will be taken in the historic England storage facility where they were to assess, analyze, and conserve them will take place. The finds will then be returned to the Netherlands and in future some material may be available for display in Ramsgate. And that would be cool to see these uh, discoveries and being preserved for all to see definitely be quite interesting to see where this uh, takes place. Next up we have a Bonro gold mine that occurred here in 2018. Um, a Bonro gold mine trucks were attacked in eastern Congo two dead says the army. In Goma, the Democratic Republic of Congo Militiamen in eastern Congo attacked trucks belonging to Banro Corp's Namoya gold mine, killing two people and kidnapping four others, the army said on Saturday, in at least the third attack on mine personnel this year. And this story comes to us by a link sent to me by Matt Tower. I think that's how you pronounce that. And thank you, Matt, for sending this along to me. The attack was carried out by militiamen from the group Mai Mai Malaika on Thursday in the Tubangoyi Forest, about 35 kilometers, about 22 miles from the mine in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo's Mani Manima province, local army spokesman Duodon Kasareka told Reuters. The two people killed are not Banro workers, but passengers that the drivers picked up along the road. For the moment, the hostages have not been found, but the Congolese army has launched operations to recover them. He added that the hostages were two drivers and two soldiers who were protecting the trucks. Banro did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Repeated attacks by the Mai Mai on Namoya and Banro's Twangizila mine in neighboring the South Kivu province in the past two years threw the Canadian company's survival into question late last year. Interesting indeed. It just goes to show you. Gold is wealth, and they understand it, so they're going to attack where the wealth is, where it's being delivered. They want to obviously disrupt some things there. Of course, Congo is a very destabil destabilized area for sure, politically and um, culturally. It was delisted from the Toronto Stock Exchange in January, but is pursuing a recapitalization plan to continue its operations. Militias like the Mai Mai who believe blessed water has magical properties like protecting fighters from bullets, have preyed on Eastern Congo's population and exploited mineral resources since the end in 2003 of a regional war that killed millions, most from hunger and disease. Mai Mai Malaika is one of the several groups allied with another militia in a zone called Mai Mai Yukantumba, which briefly threatened to capture the city of Uvira last September before being pushed back by the Congolese and UN forces. And there you have it. It's interesting. And um, 
Obviously, if these attacks have been occurring, I wonder where the gold is. Did they recover from the other wrecks? And um, what are they doing if, if they are actually um, carrying gold? But, you know, just because their um, mine truck doesn't necessarily mean it was carrying gold at the time. But uh, it's obvious if the soldiers are involved, they're, they're guarding it. So quite interesting indeed. Uh, post your thoughts below um, about this story and about the 1740 shipwreck criminal activity um, from one century to another. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and... Subscribe.